This is a video to document my homebrew computer project that I've been working on for the past few months. It has a Zilog Z80 CPU at the core, 32 kilobytes of RAM, 32 kilobytes of ROM, and a 16550 UART controller as its primary I.O. I've had the idea to make a homebrew computer from off-the-shelf parts for a few years now, and recently I found the free time and the money to invest into actually designing and building one. I chose to use a Z80 in this project because of these two right here. The Texas Instruments TI-83 calculator is something that anyone who attended high school in the US in the past 20 years should probably recognize. Almost all TI calculators have a Z80-like chip running on the inside, and knowing that it runs on 40-year-old tech makes the $80 price tag at Walmart seem a lot less justified when they probably cost only a dollar to make, if even that. I had to buy one in high school, and I spent a lot of time making games with the basic interpreter. This one here served me well for almost 10 years now, through high school and college. The Nintendo Game Boy in its many iterations was a big part of my childhood, and it always amazed me how something so simple could still be so enjoyable. The original and the color ran on custom chipsets based on the Z80, but I'm not an expert on Game Boy development, so I don't know how close the ISAs actually are. Because I was so familiar with these two, I figured the Z80 would be a great place to start. I didn't grow up with a Commodore or an Amiga, so I didn't have any nostalgia for those systems or the tech that they ran on, although I think the Super Nintendo had a 6502 chip inside somewhere. This project began on just a couple of breadboards with a Z80, a 555 timer, an 8-bit latch, and a 2K ROM chip. I didn't have an EEPROM programmer on hand, so I built one with an Arduino Micro and some shift registers. If you've seen Ben Eater's 6502 CPU project, then this will look somewhat familiar, as I borrowed a lot of the ideas from him. For my design, I use one shift register to hold an 8-bit address, and the other to hold the data values. The write and enable lines are controlled by the Arduino. This only allows you to address the first 256 bytes of the EEPROM, but at this stage, most of the programs were just turning LEDs on and off, so I didn't need that much memory. After I was satisfied with my first prototype, I upgraded the hardware a bit and added a 2K SRAM chip. Redoing all the circuits on a new breadboard also gave me an opportunity to fix the wiring and make things look a little more elegant. After tinkering with the design for a while, I began documenting my circuits in Altium so that I could have a record of how everything fits together, and so that I could eventually design a printed circuit board. At this point, I needed a name for the computer, and the best that I could come up with was the Tomato. Like, T-O-M-8-0. -O. Get it? Because it's a Z80? I, I tried. I really did. After the first batch of boards was ordered and assembled, I realized that I made a big mistake on the tomato's design and that the boards were basically worthless. The EEPROM programmer came in the same set, and that worked fine, so I had something to work on while I waited for the next batch of boards to come in. With version 1.1 of the tomato, I rearranged some of the chips and added a few things like a power status LED, which in hindsight I should have had from the start. The I.O. on the tomato is handled via two chips, the 16550 UART, and an MCP USB UART converter. These two chips working together provide a simple USB interface that you can talk to via a terminal emulator or software like PuTTY. Once you get the board hooked up to a USB port, there's a simple memory monitor that sits at the start of ROM. It allows you to read memory locations, write bytes to RAM, and execute arbitrary instructions in memory. It allows me to write programs on PC and then test them directly on the board. I also got a version of Tiny Basic to run, although I never really learned Basic as a kid like some of the other homebrew computing guys, so to me it's nice, but not something I really plan on using all that much. It's more of a milestone than anything else. Now that the hardware side of things is done, I'm moving on to developing the software. I already have the memory monitor and subroutines for getting the UART running, but no real operating system. I'll continue to document the next phases of this project as they happen, and make an update once I'm satisfied with my work. The next steps would be to write a real kernel, so that I could eventually do something like playing games in the command line. In the meantime, if you want to follow this project, everything is available on my GitHub. Circuit schematics, source code for the programmer and the tomato, even pictures of different stages of development. 
I've been updating pretty regularly, and I hope to add a lot more code in the next few weeks. But until then, thanks for watching.